recovering heroin addict. On April 21st, I celebrated 13 years of recovery. <laughs> for 12 hours. When we were playing stickball, I was playing stickball and baseball. When I was first introduced to drugs, unfortunately, I didn't have the courage to walk away. I didn't have the courage to be a leader and say, nah, I'm all set with that. I was crippled with this anxiety and this fear that if I didn't do what I was around, that they would make fun of me, they'd point the finger, and that they wouldn't want to hang out with me. And the first thing that I ever tried, I was 12 years old, and a buddy of mine stole a pack of cigarettes from his mother. We're walking home from school, and one by one, he handed a cigarette to each and every one of us. And we sat on the curb, coughing up a lung, thinking we were cool kids. Right? And that process right there followed me down the path that eventually led me to being homeless, in and out of programs, in and out of jails. And the next step was alcohol. It progressed to weed, some other drugs my freshman year. And then at 16 years old, I was introduced to this drug called Oxycontin. And at 16 years old, right? We have this stigma on heroin, right? When I say heroin, what do you guys think of that word? Drugs. It's drugs, it's dirty, it's the homeless guy holding a Burger King cup, right? It has a stigma attached to it. When you hear Oxycontin and a Percocet, it doesn't have that same ring, right? It doesn't have that same filthy feel. Well, when I was 16 years old and somebody introduced me to an Oxycontin, I didn't realize it was synthetic heroin in a pill. And I was at a house party surrounded by friends and that same thing that happened to me when I, when I smoked my first cigarette, I tried my first pill. House party surrounded by friends, I felt like it was socially acceptable because they were doing it and I followed their lead. I followed their lead. And that was in my third high school. Unfortunately, I was a classy kid, classy student. I went through four different high schools in two states. Because of my drug use, because of the decisions I was making, always trying to be the class clown or being that punk. And uh, it was all revolved around drugs. Like I had to fit in, I had to be a cool kid, I had to be a part of, and I, I, I reacted outwardly to try to get the attention that I was craving. So at 16, I started this thing called Oxycontin without realizing the depths of hell that it would uh, bring me to. Who in here wants to go to college? Who in here loves their family, their mother, father, sister, or brother, right? who has dreams and aspirations and have the big house and the white picket fence. Everybody, right? Unfortunately, when you go down that path, most of the time you don't get all that. All that, I sacrificed college, I sacrificed my, my mother, my father's love, my little sister, right? Those dreams and aspirations I had when I was a kid. I had four boats for baseball growing up. Like I used to throw low 90s, um, I had opportunity and I threw it all away because the drug meant more to me than anything else. And eventually it led me to being homeless and I progressed from doing Oxycontin every day to, to heroin. And it brought me to a, to a bottom that I didn't want to live anymore. That like, you know, I sat in high school with kids that I, I no longer hear because every, it felt like everybody I was growing up with ended up trying these things called Oxycontin and ended up progressing to heroin. And um, I literally burned every single bridge around me until I was left on an island. And when I was 21 years old, I hit my breaking point. And I'm very fortunate that I hit that breaking point because I finally, I finally wanted to live more than I wanted to die. Because that's what the drug did to me. The drug brought me to, 
to my knees. It, it stole everything that I loved. It took absolutely everything from me. And once I reached bottom, I finally had this moment of clarity, I had this miracle moment that like I actually wanted to live more than I wanted to die. And from that point, 13 years ago now, I've been able to like reach peaks in life that I never even imagined. Right? I went through a halfway house, a six month halfway house, and in that house, I rediscovered a love of mine from when I was a child. And it was something that was like my biggest therapeutic tool in helping me stay clean. It was the, the, the most helpful coping mechanism that I have, and it was writing poetry. Right? I was in a house with guys that had done 10 years in prison, uh, that lived in the streets, and once you removed the drugs from me, I was this scared little boy. The drugs were, were the facade that I thought I was a tough guy, I thought I could go hit on the hot girl. I thought I was a cool kid when I was under the influence. And then you, the second you remove those drugs, I was this scared, insecure, fearful little man, a little boy trapped inside of me. But getting all like my thoughts, feelings, and experiences through the poetry, I ended up finding this outlet that over 13 years, over 13 years of being in recovery, it's given me a platform that in 2012, I put out a book called The Shadow of an Addict. I've traveled around the country sharing like my, uh, my story through poetry to try to help and inspire other people. In 2015, Massachusetts Organization of Addiction and Recovery uh, gave me the Recovery Advocate of the Year Award, right? Which is cool. <laughs> For people like me, people, people who struggle, they, they can't get ahead, and most of the time they give that type of award to a politician. And here I am, you know, I was going to the state house class, you were state senators, trying to make a change, trying to do what you guys are doing at such a young age, right? It took me a long time to get to the point that I wanted to make an impact on my community. And sitting back there watching the presentation right before me, it's amazing to see like how young you guys are and how bad you want to give back to your community and try to make that change. Because it took me a long time. And once I started getting invested in the community, in the community, trying to make that change, trying to inspire hope and spark that, that, that others want to get clean, that others will, will stand up and speak out. Because unfortunately when you struggle with addiction, you don't always have a voice. You can't always put your story out there because of the shame that's attached to it. And that poetry gave me that opportunity to be able to share it. It opened up doors of opportunity. And three years ago, I was able to open up a treatment center in Massachusetts that now I get to treat people who are sick and suffering just like me. I got to hire people in recovery that I grew up with who got clean, that now want to give back, that really care, and that want to make a difference. And that big house and a white picket fence, two years ago I was blessed to, to buy my, my own home. I got two beautiful kids that have never, they have never seen me get high or drunk. I got a 10 year old son that thinks he's Indiana Jones. <laughs> I got a, a five year old daughter that might be the biggest diva on the planet. <laughs> Who's a, a complete handful, but she's uh, uh, absolutely amazing and can be, I call her my Sour Patch kid. She's so sweet, but that can be so sour. <laughs> and then I made the great decision of getting a dog recently peas and poops all over my house. But, you know, all these things are possible because I got clean. That I was able to hit a rock bottom and I was able to bounce back. And every night that I go home and I get to share these moments with my kids, I get to be in my son's Little League game, I get to take my daughter to, to ballet and make a feeble attempt of, of trying to teach her how to do some things because I can't dance. Um, you know, I've just been blessed with like an amazing life and amazing opportunities to like share where I come from and the things that I went through, and share like a form of self-expression that has gotten me to speak like across the country. Um, I've, I was at a Fed Up rally in DC doing some advocacy work and somebody spotted me in the crowd. And all of a sudden I'm behind the White House with a megaphone spitting poetry into it in front of like a thousand people from across the country talking about like, you know, what we go through and trying to stand up and make a difference and show that people can change, that people can recover, that, that addiction isn't a death sentence, because it's not. And, um, you know, I just, like, I live an absolutely amazing life that I'm beyond grateful for. But um, I'm going to share some poetry with you guys, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And patiently waiting until the smoke clears, tightrope walking between the city 
and serenity. I wonder if I can find hope here before the rope tears and the last thread of my misery. I can't escape the fall. The hands of fade grab hold of me, choking me, expose the broken me of what I was supposed to be. A wrong turn at the fork in the road. Now I can't turn back. Well, the door of opportunity closed, should I make my own path? I knew I shouldn't have sold that. A trip away from this foolish paradise to a place where angels with clipped wings make guitar strings sing into the afterlife. For my soul, the devil wants to know what's the asking price. My fall from grace is quicker than slipping on black ice. Still searching for solid ground, spiraling and falling down. Is this really my calling now? Does it still make my heart pound? Standing on stage, staring out of the crowd. But it's nothing but empty seats. Do I do it for them or do I do it for me? Do I do it for any peace or do I do it to be free? Just breathe. Cause I want to take your breath away. While well, I welcome y'all to my palace of shame and introduce y'all to my marriage to pain. Carrying the shadow that I battled to change. And the war was ugly. I rose from the ashes of a junkie. So load up in the bathrooms and donkeys. Now I'm getting high at the crowds in front of me. Like the applause of fix only fit for a drug. So I take a hit off the people screaming they love me. And for that one shining moment, these dark skies become sunny. I forget about the nights I was alone. Roaming the streets with no place to go, no place to call home. Raising a broken child on my own and you wonder why I got stoned. Chemicals numbing my sharp senses. How many nights is a pop bench? Is a story the time wrenching why I stop betting? The ghosts of my past coming back for vengeance. So we're just saying use me and you won't end up back behind barbed wire or fences, but I'm against this. So I pull a piece of paper out and I let my pen bleed for you to remember me. Even if my physical presence is deceased, the essence of my being will never leave. Inside these words, please cherish me for my soul to be set free is more than just a memory. Keep building, 
the more amazing things you're able to do. I mean, that group was, that, that was a large group that was up there. It started from nothing. When I started like my poetry, I read through a piece of paper into a microphone in front of four people, right? Terrified, absolutely terrified. And last September, I got to perform that miracle poem at this, at this event called Recovery Fest. And I've heard anywhere the estimated numbers in between 10,000 and 14,000 people were there. And I was able to stand on stage and share that piece with that many people yelling back. It was absolutely amazing. And it started from something so small. So groups like this at your schools, you know, it's only gonna get better. You're only gonna inspire more change and, and such a benefit for your community. So like, keep pushing. Even if there's obstacles in your way, like keep trying to shine and inspire others at your school. Because selfishly, you guys are the future for my kids. You going out there taking a stand against destructive decisions, against drinking and drugging, you guys make it so it's cool not to drink and drug. You guys are gonna inspire the next generation, which will inspire the next generation, will affect my little man and my baby girl. And that's something that I pray to God, you know, you guys can set the tone for. Because going back to the statement I said when I first got up here, I'm in a room full of leaders. You guys are gonna lead the way for the future. And selfishly, I want you guys to continue pursuing it at each and every one of your schools and your group of friends to take that stand and not, not make these decisions. You know, because you guys are inspiring to me. Like, it's, it's beautiful to see the kind of work that you guys do. And I know you guys are gonna make a huge difference and a huge dent for our future. People my age, right, you can only treat people who are sick. People at a your age is gonna prevent the opioid epidemic, alcoholism, all that from getting any worse. Because you guys are gonna set the tone for it. You guys are the future. So, uh, I got one more poem for you guys, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right? You sure? yeah. On the surface of a sleepless ocean, the cold depths of frozen emotion, on pieces of a broken floating inside of love that was stolen. I'm written poetry spoken. I'm a fresh page with a mind full of things to say, reminiscing on yesterday's best days to get the stress away. Even if I'm depressed today, I'm that feeling inside. When you look your lover in the eyes, they know what the personal life could provide. I'm the sun setting on a crimson sky. I'm trapped inside these speakers, turning naysayers into believers. When the poem gets deeper, I'm the teacher abusing the fact that I have the platform to reach you. I'm lost in the wind, a breeze that will never come across you again. Brought up in Boston, Boston, the problems coming up from the bottom will rise is the only option. I'm the beautiful ugly, a recovered junkie, making barely enough money to keep a roof over. Me and my son that loves me, and I refuse to let him go hungry because my past has come back to crush me. I'm that first breath of freedom, breathing the thousand reasons, leaving a cell block of demons, screaming freedom like you just left work for the weekend. Only the work week lasted for five years. Borrow time, make you see clear as you watch your youth disappear. You learn the truth when you're in there. Only your true friends will be there when you breathe free air. I'm the rebirth of pop poem and Shakespeare. I'm the rose that grew from concrete, the thump thump beneath the street, and where Romeo and Juliet with me, I'm the madness created from the telltale hobby. I'm Achilles in war, but my pen is my sword. Using the allure of everything I went through before is a metaphor that you don't have to struggle anymore. I'm that morning light. After making it through a night that might have taken your life when there was nothing but darkness in sight, but you find the strength to fight because the sun shines bright. Once you believe everything will be all right, I'm the last words that a poet writes. I'm the skies telling the story of my past that remind me of what I'll see when I'm looking back. Similes didn't have an impact on half of that, so I literally mapped out the path from where I was at. I'm chaos finding serenity, the point beyond infinity, taking what's given to me so I could build from within my city. I can pray for my enemies because once upon a time they were a friend of me, regardless if they see it differently. I'm trying to make history. I'm a legend. Or so I've been told by my friends that made it to heaven as a pendant. I'm the extension of their resurrection. Redemption. If anyone abuses the prescription, medicine is progression, let them to heroin, let that settle in. I'm the voice of a generation, raising my voice to the nation. Inspiration, very out of getting high in the basement. A kid trying to get clean is a detox patient. But they can say, I am one of the ones that made it. I'm hope for those that lost it. Still carrying peace of broken dreams in their pocket. Who think happiness is finding material objects? I'm street knowledge. I'm passion, pleasure, and pain. I'm lightning, thunder, and rain. What my mother made on the first day of May. I'm a heroin addict to change. Or couldn't wash away the stains that come to my veins. I'm Matthew Gale, and you will remember the name. <laughs> Um, I'll be on 
blessed to be up there, up here, sharing some things. But before I step off, I want everybody in here to get really loud for yourselves and for everybody to put this event together one more time. Yeah.